Welcome to Cafe to Go, the International Association of Business Communicators podcast. I'm Paige Wesley with IABC, and I'm joined today by IABC President Julie Freeman, ABC APR, and IABC Chair Adrian Cropley, ABC. Welcome, Julie and Adrian. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Paige. Yes, thanks. Great for to see us. you both. Likewise. We're talking today about IABC strategic planning. And we just spent a really good weekend on beginning to um, beginning our strategic planning for 2012 through 2015. So we're going to talk a little bit about that process and about what we hope to accomplish. But before we get into that, I wanted to just ask you um, about kind of when when we started when you started thinking about this process. What are kind of the key points that you wanted to get into a strategic plan? And what was your vision, Adrian, around developing a strategic plan for IABC going forward? You know, I, I think with the, the strategic plan, it's actually a process we started probably two years ago when we went out to the membership base um, and started looking at what is it that adds value to our members, what is it they want from us, and also what does the profession want from us as an association. Um, and that got formed up into what was the, the then the blueprint document that we took forward last year and went through a, a planning process to develop the strategic pillars for IABC where we really looked at you know how do we grow our membership, our, our career offering and uh, certainly content which was the biggest need for our members. And so what we did this year um, is took the executive committee away for this this last weekend, mm -hmm. um, locked them away and made sure they <laughs> were focused on, <laughs> on where we're going as an association and said looking at, at the pillars and, and the, the three areas that we're really focused on this year is so what is it we need to do in the area of content, what do we need to do in the area of, of career and professional development and also how do we grow our business of IABC um, in both of those particular areas. Um, and I think the importance of the strategic plan this year is that we'll take that that plan, the executive committee work with that, which is the representation of the, the board and the staff, and together we've worked through that. We'll work with the extended board from now through till October um, in really setting some clear objectives around those three areas and then go to the association and start consulting with the, the regions and the chapters to get some alignment within the direction that we're, we're going. Julie, Adrian touched on the fact that, um, that we locked the executive committee away. <laughs> I know that there were, and he mentioned, he touched on staff as well, I know that there were um, not just members of the executive committee, but there were some other people, staff and others from the board who were involved in this meeting. Can you tell us who was there and, and what role they took in this process? Well, one of the uh, participants in the process was the chair of the research committee because IABC has undergone a reorganization designed to place greater emphasis on research and as part of our content offerings. And so it was seemed very wise to include that perspective in the discussions about our strategic objectives moving forward. Another emphasis in our planning and our programming is the accreditation program. So the vice chair of the accreditation committee joined us to add that perspective to the discussion. And um, in addition, uh, just a board member who's a really good thinker and um, new to the board because, you know, the challenge for the association is, as with any organization, but we're talking about the association, is to stay current with the, both the business trends and the environmental trends of our members. And so adding someone who's new, who's not been through these discussions before, I think was very valuable. And of course the senior staff was there as well because uh, we have the perspective of, of operations and association management and, and ultimately will be responsible in carrying out the direction that the board has set. So it was an, ex it was an excellent group. I, I think it was a, a fabulous group and, and having the, the balance of, of board and staff in that group so that we, we keep very clear around the programs that we're already working on and where we're going in, uh, 
and, and how we align those to the strategic direction is just such a critical piece because you can't just develop strategy and say we're going to change everything that we're doing. You've got to do it in, in, uh, in an enlightened approach knowing what you're already doing really well and build on, on that and I think that's what was really important about this year's this year's process, and you know, we're kind of excited. Well, I am about yeah, what we what it. came out <laughs> what came out of the uh, the weekend that we can now start sharing with the board. What were the key deliverables? Do you think this week? Either one of you want to answer that question? Well, I, I might talk a little bit about the 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 career side of it, and mm -hmm. maybe Julie can pick up on some of the discussion we had around the the content and maybe even the the business. But certainly one of the, the clear things from our members was about um, engaging with our members from a whole of career aspect. So how do we develop the career of a communicator? And we have a, a, a fantastic process with our accreditation program, with our, their, our ABC, but is there scope for other levels um, through, the, uh, through the lifelong career journey of a communicator that they're need to aim for and how do we then partner with them on the programs, the courses that we deliver and how do we make things like our conference relevant to the career of a communicator and is this about having you know, uh, uh, an accreditation that you aim for and, and that's it or is it about continuous learning and I think you know, in today's world it is about how do we really partner with our members to provide um, quality programs and training to suit their career and that they you know, hit and maintain the standards right throughout their career and that was a, a really key, key discussion I think uh, an area of focus for us moving forward. Mm -hmm. and Absolutely. Then there was the content. Um, well and content was also an area of rather vigorous discussion because we have learned through member surveys and a lot of member feedback that the reason they come to IABC is to have access to content. And, however, we need to develop that capacity further. I, I think we can be proud of the content that our volunteer experts produce through our publications, uh, but there's, there's more to, to it than that. We want to broaden the uh, amount of, I guess, or the what we include in our content offerings to include relevant content from other sources besides just IABC sources. We also need to do more to harness the ideas and examples of our members, crowdsourcing if you will, yeah. that, that, that concept. And what's most important too, or, or very important in making all this work is, is content curation because everyone wants to find what they want, when they want it, and, and not spend lots of time researching it. So we can take the role of exercising some judgment about what's valuable, of organizing it, and um, so that when members come to IABC for their content needs, they will find the relevant uh, information and ideas that will help them in their jobs and their careers. And it means also with, with using that content then in that professional development context, so it becomes mm -hmm the source of the, the, the development that we use. So it's kind of bringing it together, isn't it, and, and streamlining that, that whole area of content leading into career and the content that we use to help in developing those programs for, for us. Um, and then we, we've already started with um, a few initiatives um, mm -hmm. as we made the changes uh, earlier this year with our research foundation and, and established a new research committee. It was really important that, uh, that we look at the new role of that research committee in this, the, the content. And we've already started a new initiative to have uh, a group come together and look at the roadmap um, of Korea and is there other levels of certifications and what does that look like? So we're quite excited that you know we're we're now a couple of days in after the conversation and things are already kicking into play, which is fabulous. There was a lot of conversation this weekend around um, the business mm -hmm. as well when we look at the the pillars that have been created and with the focus on content and career, uh, with membership of course at the heart of that. But we looked a lot. We spent a lot of time on the business and. Adrian, you have been um, particularly um, vocal around business as being a, a 
very strong part of what we do here. So I'd, I'd like you to spend some time defining what you mean by that and what we talked about this weekend. I think one of the, the key areas, and I've been very focused on the fact that what we have to do is grow our business in other areas, look at other sources of revenue for IABC. We, we are and always will be a membership-based organization where dues is our major revenue source. Um, I think what we have to do is start looking at other areas of revenue and I think through our content and certainly our programs we've got the ability to establish other sources of revenue for the association so we can put those benefits back into our membership. Um, and what it, what it means from a, a, a business sense too is that we have to then think um, as Julie was saying, we, with our content, it's not just what we produce. The same with our professional development, it's not what we're producing, but who can we partner with to offer the best for our members in the field? And I guess, you know, it, it makes IABC as an association the person that, that you would come to to say, what should I be doing? Where should I be focusing my energies? And what is good content? And what is good training and development programs that I would attend. So it kind of gives us the give the stamp of approval mm -hmm. to our partners who we would work with within the market right throughout the world. We, we can't offer everything to everybody here. So we've got to partner with people around the world to be able to you know help, number one, grow the business and the revenue streams, but more importantly, establish our presence in different markets in our training and development and content offerings. So we become, as well as a developer of content and professional development, we, we become a facilitator for providing um, members of the IABC community with access to the most relevant content that's out there. Correct. In Australia, are you familiar with the Good Housekeeping Seal of Approval? Um, no, but we get the uh, Heart Foundation tick of approval, <laughs> and it's, I think it's something of a, a similar, similar nature. It's, it's yeah. going when you see that tick or you see that stamp, and, and I think that would be great for IABC to say, well, if we can see that IABC is listed on it, we know that it is a good, good source of content or it's a good source right. of development. Right. I think it's a great, great concept. <laughs> Good Housekeeping is a, is a magazine in the United States ah. and they used to give their approval to certain products. Oh, fabulous. And so if, it, if something had the Good Housekeeping seal of approval, you know it was something that you could comfortably buy or use. And so that's really the concept you're talking about is that, I don't think we'd say we're the Good, the good Housekeeping, but you know, that the IABC certifies this or approves of this or the healthy career stamp of approval. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the good communicator the good circle, right? That's it. <laughs> what are the next steps in creating IABC strategic plan? Well, you know, I'd like to say something about business first. Oh, though. sorry. And, sure. and I think um, the, the business idea and that, you know, that may make, make people a little nervous because they say, oh, you're a nonprofit membership organization. Mm, right. But it's more in a sense of being business-like and that also includes things like uh, paying attention to being operationally efficient, um, to being fiscally sound, and probably what will resonate with people is making sure that we have engaged qualified volunteers and staff mm -hmm. that can deliver the services. Because as someone said to me years ago, you know, if you think of um, an association's product like the soup, you can't get the you you can't get them to the um, diner unless you have a ladle. Yeah. <laughs> and so we need to be sure that we have qualified staff and volunteers, and that they are engaged, and that they are acting as that label ladle to get the the soup to our customers. Absolutely, I I like the soup analogy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for thank you for bringing that perspective in, so that people do see that whole perspective of what, mm -hmm. um, how we define our business at IABC. Right. So next steps for the strategic plan? Well, the, the next steps are that over the next few weeks, both the staff and the board are engaging to develop the strategy further and make sure that uh, all the inputs have, have been given. Um, we'll be looking to approve that strategy at the board meeting. Then we go into the, the, the wonderful mechanism of the budgeting 
uh, and, and really about the priorities. What is it that we need to do, be doing first? What's the next year's priorities um, in, in moving forward in the strategic plan? Um, this year what, what we really want to do is engage with our regions and our chapters in the strategic plan. So the, the communication is going to become a, a fundamental piece of this moving forward because it's great to develop these things and stick it in a manual or put it on the website and, and hope somebody will look at it. Um, <laughs> but we actually need to drive in that direction and and I think there's a real thirst to, to ensure that, that we work with the chapters and with the regions even closer than we have before in, in saying, well, if we're delivering some of this stuff out there, how do we work with the local markets? Because we can think of things from a global perspective, but we've got to work absolutely locally. So we've really got to have those continuing discussions, communications as we move forward with the strategy. So I think it's an important piece. To absolutely. To do. How does this um, strategic plan ultimately impact members of the association? Um, that's a really good good question. Um, I think you know when I when I think about it, the impact for for members of the association is is that they'll see further benefits of belonging to the association, particularly if we're increasing. You know the volume of content that we have and that interaction and, and actively seeking out the content. Um, I think you know some of the changes that that need to happen in in the area of professional development, career, and and accreditation. I think we've got a, a few changes that we need to look at there. It's not about changing the accreditation process that we have, but making sure is it. You know, at what level in the career does this really hit, and are there other things that people need to to work towards in terms of leveling? So I think what members will see is a greater engagement with IABC as a partner in in their career and in their life. I think it. You know, we built the strategic plan on member feedback, mm -hmm. and what it helps us to do is because in any association, in any organization, there are thousands of ideas. And the strategic plan helps us to focus activities and resources on those initiatives that we've heard from members are important to them. And the goal of having a strategic plan is so that we can use it as a way to um, develop activities and budgets that ultimately will deliver the value to members that they say they want from the association. We're getting ready to uh, wind up this episode of Cafe to Go, and I'm just curious if there are any last minute comments either one of you would like to provide. Um, I think from from my perspective, it is uh, you know it, this is an exciting time in in IABC's um, continuum. Um, we're we're really looking at after a couple of years of, of focusing on what it is that members want. We're now taking a strategic plan and focus and looking at this change for the organization that really starts aligning our members very clearly with their, their career and their lifelong journey and I, I think that's an exciting time for us. It's a lot of work. Um, mm -hmm. We all look at this and go, wow, there's a lot of work to do so we need to engage with a lot of people to help us step this forward in some of the committees that we need to establish communication that's got to go go out there um, so I think it's going to be a, a very busy time um, but a very exciting time for IABC. I would say it's not a change but an evolution and a, yeah a, a really you know it really yeah. builds on the solid values and programming that we've offered all through the years but it's an evolution that will keep us up to date and and make us meeting current needs and I would absolutely agree with you, it, it will be a lot of work. It will. <laughs> <laughs> but in a good way. We all see that in a good way. <laughs> and believe it or not, it will be a lot of fun, too. Uh -huh. Yes, it will. Here's we always fun. have fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, we do. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, much. Thank you for joining this episode of Cafe to Go. And for all of your own communication planning and strategic planning needs, please visit IABC's online library, Discovery, at www.iabc.com, and we'll see you again soon.